Oh my god, that was so good. And it's like this wild, wild moment. You know, I feel like a rocket in this book. Like I'm just zooming out of my reading slump. Oh my god, the end of part two was insane. I just need to know, you know? I just need to know. So it has been a hot minute since the last time I filmed a reading vlog. I haven't done one in like a really long time for some reason and as you guys may know I've been going through a really bad reading slump for the past like month, month and a half-ish. And so I thought, you know what, why not film a reading vlog to sort of get me jump started back into reading and also pick up something that I know I'm definitely gonna enjoy. You guys know I love YA sci-fi and fantasy and the book I'm gonna be picking up today is My Perfect Cup of Tea. So this video is being kindly sponsored by Penguin Teen for the paperback release of Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson. So I am super, super excited to be picking up this book. Like ever since I heard the concept of this book, I was like, totally hooked. It is a YA sci-fi that also feels a little bit like a fantasy. It follows our main character Andra who is a teen in like the 22nd century and she along with her family go into a cryonic sleep and are intending to wake up a hundred years later on a new planet that they're going to colonize. But unfortunately for Andra instead of waking up a hundred years later she wakes up a thousand years later in the year 3102 and the descendants of the colonists seem to have lost all their sense of technology and seem to think that it is some sort of magic and so they think that Andra is a goddess you know emerging from this machine and they also think that robots and other such things are angels and any sort of technology that they can't explain seems to be magic. I'm already like 50 pages in and this is already going this so so good. It has two different perspectives Andra but also another perspective from a character named Jade so like a cross between Jade and Shade that's his name, uh, and he is the exiled bastard prince of Aronsed, which is the kingdom on this planet. And I haven't yet reached why he's been exiled, but it seems really interesting. And there are chapters from his perspective too, which are super interesting because the people of Aronsed have a different way of speaking. Like this is a thousand years later, so English has definitely evolved and changed in a lot of ways. And so the way he speaks English is a lot different, but it's so, so interesting. Like he's got an accent, but he also so like says different words but you can sort of like contextually pick up what he means so that's super super interesting so yeah I'm not very far in as I said but I'm really excited to dive further in and you guys a review by the end and go through some spoilery thoughts because I definitely think this one is going to be a really cool one to discuss. It really reminds me of that Arthur C. Clarke quote where he basically says something along the lines of any sufficiently advanced technology is basically indistinguishable from magic, which is basically what like Jade and the other people from Aaron said and on this planet are sort of experiencing. They don't understand the technology and sort of the world that Andra is from and you know the version of Earth that she is from and so they think that all of this cool technology is actually magic, which I find just so, so interesting as like a concept to explore in a sci-fi. So yeah, I'm just like really interested in that aspect of this book and that theme and how it's going to sort of evolve. And before I sort of get into the vlog portion of this video, I did want to tell you that the second book in the series, Devil in the Device, is also coming out very soon on August 24th. So you should definitely go check it out. This is the sequel to the book and I know I'm going to want to pick it up immediately after finishing it this. So I'm really glad that Penguin Teen sent me this as well. So yeah, if you're planning to pick up Goddess in the Machine, I would highly recommend pre-ordering a Devil in the Device. The link to grab a copy is in my description. But yes, I'm going to be reading this for most of today and just diving deeper in and letting you know my thoughts. It's been a while since I had like a really sort of mind-blowing sci-fi to read. I think the last one that really hit me was the Scythe trilogy by Neil Shusterman and I'm getting some vibes from that and the way that they talk about some of the technology in this and I also like how it's a little bit like a fantasy because of you know Jade's perspective and where he's coming from so yeah really really excited and it also seems like there might be like a romance between Jade and Andra but yeah super interested in this so I'm gonna read more and sort of check back later. I have some filming to do later today and just some other errands to run so I'm gonna be reading this on and off today and then hopefully maybe tomorrow or the day after I'll be giving you my full thoughts. Hey everyone so it's a little bit later I am a little bit further into Goddess in the Machine I'm about a hundred pages in 
my chapter 12 actually and it is going fantastic i'm loving our two main characters jade and andra but i'm also loving sort of the slightly comical nature of everything going on and all of the reveals that we're getting as we are learning more about this like planet and world that we're on. But yeah, I'm loving Jade. He has like a really funny humor, but he also seems to be hiding a lot of secrets. That's really interesting. But I'm also just loving how like this has slightly higher stakes than you would expect because the kingdom and sort of planet that they're on, Aaron said, sort of works like a Victorian kingdom. So like there are these like maids that come to take care of Andra, when she like arrives at the palace, she's like just so overwhelmed with some stuff that she learns and she yells at them and tells them to leave. And at the part where I'm at, which is not very far in, she's just been told by Jade that these maids are gonna get executed because they displeased her as the goddess. And it's like this wild, wild moment. So like, yeah, in just in that way, it's like the stakes are so high and like Andra's obviously freaking out um, about the fact that she might be getting these girls killed and I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna see. It's going great. I'm loving the sci-fi fantasy nature of this and I can already feel that it's gonna be a new favorite so yeah just excited to read more hello my friends it's a lot later it's like 10 30 at night but i am halfway through the book and it is so good so far and i actually just reached part three judas kiss and oh my god the end of part two was insane there was like this crazy crazy plot twist that i did not see coming at all like you think you know what's going on and then boom plot twist. I absolutely loved it and I'm so excited to see where it's gonna go. I feel like the rest of the book is gonna take a much darker turn from what I can tell. The first half definitely felt pretty light and there are some like kind of fun sort of palsy parts to it where Andra's like getting goddess lessons and like you know learning to interact with the palace people whereas I feel like the rest of the book is going to zip forward in terms of the plot and we're gonna get some more action and more secrets revealed. I feel like there's a lot more to learn about the circumstances of why Andra woke up a thousand years late and all of that. So I'm very, very interested and now I really wanna know. So I think I'm gonna read it like a little bit more tonight and then probably finish this off tomorrow and then give you guys my final thoughts on the book but yeah I'm really enjoying it and I'm like so curious now especially after that plot twist like of just what's going on I also love the dynamic between Jade and Andra they're super cute there were some nice moments but I also feel like the romance doesn't like overshadow the rest of what's going on which is also great and then there are some like really great side characters Andra has a maid named Lilibeth who is just super cute and hilarious and Jade has like this servant slash friend named Luiden I believe and he's also great too so yeah there's some like great side characters going on and I'm just like really really curious now to find out like more of the mystery of like why things are the way they are and I'm curious to see like what sort of plot twists are gonna drop towards the end and what, you know, questions we're gonna have even after the end of this book because there is the sequel, Devil and the Device. So yeah, very, very curious now. I'm gonna read more now and I will check back later, probably tomorrow, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this and so curious now. Hello, my friends, it is a new day, it is Sunday and I am on chapter 41 of Goddess in the Sheep. 41, can you see that? 41. And oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> there have been like 10 different twists that have happened in like the past maybe 50 to 100 pages. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but like I was like tabbing pages on the book every time something crazy happened or there was something I wanted to talk about. And I'm, I'm just blown. And the most recent plot twist has blown my mind. I did not see that coming at all. And... Yeah, I just don't know where it's gonna go from here and I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go in the next book. But I'm on page 358, the beginning of chapter 41. And I think I have maybe like 30, no, 25 pages left. 25-ish pages left. So I thought I would just like read that on camera and you know, give you my final thoughts on the book before I also give you some of my spoilery thoughts because this has been absolutely insane, but I actually really, really love it. Like, it's been a while since I've had, like, a mind-blowing 
sci-fi to read and I'm just really excited by how well this is going and I definitely feel like this was like the perfect thing to get me out of my reading slump so very excited about that. So I will check back with you in just a little bit after I finish these last 25 pages and then we'll chat about my final thoughts about Goddess and the Machine. Hello my friends, I have just finished Goddess in the Machine and oh my god, that was so good. I thought there couldn't be more twists, but there were and there was one at the very, very end which I like sort of saw coming as we were leading up to that final chapter and oh my god. I was right and it was insane. And I'm so, so curious of what's gonna happen in the next book, Devil in the Device, which is out August 24th. And my gosh, I just, I'm so curious as to what's gonna happen. I don't know if this is a duology or a full series, but I just really wanna know what happens next because that ending was insane. So I thought it'd be fun to give you a general review of the book and sort of five reasons why I think you should pick it up because this was honestly just so fantastic. So the first reason is the main character, Andra, who is um, a fat main character. She's plus size. And she's also just so endearing. I think she was a fantastic character to follow. I loved being inside her head. And there are some just revelations about her character that you, you know, learn along the way that just make her even more endearing. And so in that way, I feel like she's just like the perfect person to follow. She starts out very sort of timid and scared and nervous, but I think she really comes into her own by the end of the book. The second reason is the really awesome and cool world that this is set in. It is a version of our world, but set a thousand years into the future. And it is just so changed that it's slightly unrecognizable. But as you sort of go through the book, you realize that actually it is a little bit more recognizable than you initially thought. And for that reason, it's just so interesting and you're trying to pick apart how sort of you can see the way our current timeline could turn into something like this. And so in that way it felt like really interesting and even plausible to think that this could happen a thousand years into the future. Number three is to pick this up if you like sci-fi, but also if you like fantasy, because this does feel a little bit like a fantasy wearing sci-fi clothes or a sci-fi wearing fantasy clothes, if that makes sense. Even though this is a sci-fi, it's set like a thousand years in the future and it involves like cryonic sleep and like different technology and different robots and stuff, there is this like fundamental aspect of like the place that they're in Aaron said of having this like monarchy and like a government and you know an evil monarch and that sort of thing and like trying to usurp a king and all of that sort of going on and this idea of like goddesses and angels and how the people view technology and so in that way it just seems super interesting and even if you're not a major sci-fi fan I think if you like fantasy and you like YA fantasy you're definitely gonna like this one. Reason number four is the lovely love interest but also second main character to the book which is Jade. I think Jade's character is just so interesting because he seems like one thing at the beginning but he really does evolve into something else by the end and I honestly didn't see some of the things with his character coming which I thought was just so interesting and he's got a lot of secrets to begin with and you sort of know that but as you learn more about him I think he just becomes so much more interesting and he's also just a really funny guy and so there's like some really great moments I think there was one um towards the end this isn't like a spoilery one but I just thought it was like a really funny exchange of dialogue so they're having this moment I'm not gonna say what actually happens but they have this bit of dialogue so she's sort of patching him up in a small way and then he's like be gentle with me goddess and she's like you're delusional and he's like mirish with you I wrecked you were going to say something else and then she glares at him and she says proof that when you're supposed to be listening you're waiting for your turn to talk and then he's like it's part of my charm she says you're an asshole and then he says that's a massive yet disgusting insult I wreck I was born a thousand years too late I missed all the best words and it's just really funny like the little exchange and banter that they have which I loved and I love like sort of the chemistry between them but yeah, I love his character. I think he's just hilarious. And if you like bantery characters, he's a great one. And also just like all the things sort of going on. I feel like we still don't know like 
everything about him and same with Andra. And so I'm curious to see what else we're gonna learn in the next book. And then the fifth and the final reason I think you should definitely pick up Goddess in the Machine and this entire series is the awesome twists and turns that this book had. Like I was on my toes for most of this. I think the beginning took it like a little slower and like eased you into the world. But then honestly, once we got to like that midpoint, there was just nonstop twists and turns and like reveals. And I just absolutely loved all of it. I think every time there was a plot twist, I was like, oh, it can't, you know, get any twistier than this. And then it would. And that was what was so interesting. And so there's a lot of things that you believe at the beginning that you think are true that sort of get turned on their head by the end. And yeah, those last few plot twists, I was like blown and I did not see them coming. And I'm so, so curious to see what's gonna happen in Devil in the Device. So I'm definitely gonna be picking this up very soon. If you guys would like to see a reading vlog of this, let me know. But yeah, those are all of my non-spoilery thoughts about this book. Like I think it was just fantastic. So many great twists, such an interesting sci-fi world and some really endearing main characters as well. So yeah, just interested to see where it's gonna go. And if you would like to stick around, I would love to give you guys my spoilery thoughts on all of these crazy plot twists. But for those of you who have not read the book and are hoping to pick it up now, I definitely recommend doing so and you know checking out Devil and Device with the link in my description but if you'd like to go read it and then come back later to listen to my spoilery thoughts I would leave now. All right but for those of you who stuck around for the spoilery thoughts on Goddess in the Machine my god I did not see most of these plot twists coming. I honestly entered this book not expecting it to take the turns that it did like I thought it was just gonna be like her sort of waking up a thousand years later and like it's sort of taking a fantasy-ish turn and I honestly just didn't know what to expect in terms of plot and I thought that the whole like kingdom aspect with like Merit as the king and Jade being like this bastard prince that was all super interesting but I think the like first plot twist that like really hooked me was the one towards like the middle where we find out that uh, Andra isn't actually on Hollymouth as she believed she was actually left behind on earth and that this place this like you know horrible hellish place is actually earth a thousand years later and you're realizing that it has deteriorated so very much and that no one's really going to survive there and that was such an interesting twist i felt like because we like come into it with this like idea that we're on a different planet we're on hollymouth and then once you realize that no this is actually earth just like this is how it's changed a thousand years later that was just insane and i loved it and it also just like ripped away this like sense of purpose from andra who was like i'm gonna return to earth i'm gonna return to the place that i know even if my family is dead all right the next plot twist that i thought was like super insane it was the one that rashmi was an ai and that she was the second and so that was like really really interesting and that's the first like idea that we get of like AI characters and Rashmi was actually like someone Andra knew on earth like a thousand years ago and she was like jealous of her because like uh the guy that she liked liked Rashmi and all that so that was interesting and then I think the thing that like really surprised me afterwards was like Jade's betrayal I mean I sort of saw it coming like I, we knew he was using her to a certain extent but I didn't actually think that they would end up in this situation with Merit sort of giving uh, Andra the choice between who to kill. And I'm honestly really glad that she picked like killing Jade over Luiden, even though Luiden dies. And guys, I was so heartbroken when he died because like he has the girl and like the kid and you know, his sister and so many people who care for him. And like from the beginning, Andra really stresses the fact that like Luiden was just so sweet to her and kind and caring and kept her secrets from Jade and all that. And so in that way, I just felt like so bad for the fact that like he died. But I was also really, really sad because I, for a second I thought that like, Andra would be able to save him and like put him into stasis but then obviously she didn't have like the ice pick dagger thingy which was also super cool like the part where she saves Dune from dying um after she attempts to assassinate her that was super cool and I love that and how she starts to realize that her powers are a lot stronger than she realized and it's honestly just like her using her coding to like make the nanobots work which is also cool and then of course we have the final plot twist or the final two plot twists that like totally changed the game actually three oh my god there were so many plot twists so one was jade making that final step to take the crown from merit so manipulating andra into removing the crown from merit's head while he's in stasis and then putting it on himself and then doing that whole like spell to 
graft his face to look like Merritt. Like that was wild. And I did not see that coming. Like I didn't think he would change his face to be Merritt. I thought he was just gonna like take over, take the crown and just rule as himself, which I would have been sort of okay with. But this is like sort of a sinister turn to things that I didn't expect. And I'm curious to see how it's gonna go. If he's gonna, you know, regain his face, if he plans to sort of rule like Merritt or if he plans to slowly like make it seem like Merritt has changed and how also he's gonna deal with Serena because Serena was like, a whole other thing and I'm curious to learn more about her. I feel like there's some sort of backstory with her and the first that we are just not getting and obviously we know oh and this is actually a fourth plot twist that Jade's mother is Alberta Griffin and that Alberta Griffin was also the first and that Jade was the son of the first. That whole plot twist was also really interesting and just knowing that the first had put him on this mission to go find Andra and told him that she would you know be what would save them. That was also super interesting. But the way that he sort of like takes his mother's directive into his own hands and sort of changes it, the fact that he, she never told him to sort of become king himself and or gov himself and, you know, take Merit's face. This is never part of the plan, but it's part of his plan. That was really interesting. So I'm curious to see what else Jade has planned and what he's going to do because I feel like he's a little bit of a wild card. And then the last two <laughs> plot twists, oh my God. So the major one that we find out about our lovely main character, Andra, that she is an AI. I honestly did not see that coming at all. And then you have that moment when we're in the perspective of Rashmi and she is like realizing that she's sort of dying and then she's like, oh no, but I can transfer my information to the other AI. I just have to like poke her in her little birthmark thing. And then you're like, wait, AI, that's Andra. And then Andra has the realization that she is an AI as she's like accumulating this information from Rashmi and that was like insane. And also just insane how she starts to like reevaluate how she thinks about herself. This entire time she thought she was human and then she realizes that that was sort of like limiting her ability to do things and how she just needed an upgrade, right? From that little ice pick thing. So she does the upgrade, that was wild. And then she's also just reevaluating like all of her relationships from a thousand years ago and how like they weren't actually real per se and how she was created by Alberta Griffin in that hollow that Alberta Griffin gives her. And that was like really cool. And it's interesting how she's like having these thoughts about how like she hates Alberta Griffin, but then she's like, oh wait, no, you know, no you don't. But then she realizes, no, that's my programming telling me that. And so it's like this weird sort of mental gymnastics of her knowing that she's programmed to do something but also wanting to fight against that programming but also not being able to fight against that programming and so she just you know is doing what she's been programmed to do and she wants to save humanity and then the final plot twist which I uh, like I'm starting to like realize it once we got that hollow from Alberta Griffin but I like, but if you told me that this was gonna happen at the beginning of the book, I wouldn't have believed it because the idea that all of those people in the cryo tanks were just there from the beginning and they never actually left was so wild. And I honestly am so, so curious now as to what happened a thousand years ago and why those cryo tanks never left and why they never went to Hollywood and why Rashmi's tank and Alberta Griffin's tank and Andre's tank were the only ones that were sort of left outside of this annex and, you know, left for everyone to find and worship and then awaken, right? They were the only goddesses sort of left for people to find and everyone else was sort of kept away and were never found. And it's just wild to me. And this entire time, it's so interesting because Andre was like so upset that she'd been left behind, that all these people had, you know, went and survived and lived happily on Hollymouth and, you know, survived as humanity and left everyone behind. And she makes some comments like at some point in the book, I forget when, uh, she's realizing that like most of the colonists who were chosen to go to Hollymouth were like celebrities or like upper middle class and like looked a certain way and it was a lottery system but it really wasn't like all the scientists who worked on it got to go and so she realizes like the bias in that and so that was interesting and then she's like feeling sort of horrible about things because she was left behind but really as we find out at the end she wasn't left behind no one made it off and so I'm so curious now because it's like this whole concept of like a thousand years later and they're trying to save humanity which is also just a really cool sort of concept and I am loving it. This is like a mashup of like some of my favorite sci-fis and I love that. And I'm just so, so curious to see where it's gonna go in the next book because like, I just need to know, you know? I just need 
to know. Yeah, I'm like curious to see what's gonna happen between Andra and Jade, but really just what's gonna happen with this entire world and how they're gonna sort of either save humanity or fail to save humanity. I'm not completely 100% sure that this is gonna have a happy ending, but I just can't wait to find out. But yeah, those are all of my like sort of spoilery thoughts. I feel like I had just a range of emotions reading this, especially like the second half. I was like really, really into it in that second half and I just like couldn't stop at some point. And I had to like stop last night because I was like really, really tired, but then I like picked it up this morning and was just captivated and I yeah I feel like the second book is gonna be equally as twisty and turny and I feel like there's just even more revelations that we're not yet prepared for so I'm excited for that and I just can't wait to see where it's gonna go but yeah thank you guys so so much for watching this I hope you enjoyed this sort of vlog I feel like this is less like vloggy and more just like me updating you on my thoughts on the book in between so I hope you like this sort of style of vlogging but yeah let me know which you sort of prefer like the ones with more b-roll or the ones with more talking whatever it is and I'm just so glad I finally finished a book it's been a while guys I've been in a reading slump for a bit there but I'm glad this is sort of like launched me out of it and you know I feel like a rocket in this book like I'm just zooming out of my reading slump so yeah excited about that thank you so so much for watching let me know if you guys have read goddess in the machine and what you thought of it if you have if you had any of the same feelings as me if you saw any of the plot twists coming or if you were as astounded as I was about all of them and if you haven't read goddess in the machine I would love to know if you're excited to pick it up and thinking about picking it up now and if you have read it and are planning to pick up the second book definitely use the link in my description to check it out thank you guys so much for watching definitely go check out my Instagram and Twitter and Goodreads in the description down below if you want to get regular updates on my reading and I will see you in my next video so please remember that this story ain't over bye